everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Presence, if you don't know me, and I'm doing economics at LSE right now. Um, and I got a lot of questions about what books to read to prepare for economics or what books are good to include in a personal statement. And I thought I would just share my book collection that I had when I was in year 12. I am going to share the books that I read when I was in year 12 about economics, the ones that I really liked for specific topics and why I recommend them, why maybe it might be something that you might like to read and I will also put the links in the description so you can check it out and get it from Amazon. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly share all the books that I have related to economics when I was in year 12 and I'll pick the ones that I recommend. Um, bear in mind that these are just the books that I like and I recommend and it's not that you have to read these books or that they're the only good ones out there. There's so many new ones out there that I haven't read yet um, and yeah these are just my what I did and what I read and why I think you might want to read it if you're interested in economics and you're planning to apply. Um, so yeah let's get into it. So I'll just do a quick rundown of everything and then I will go deep into specific ones. So I read Undercover Economist, that's a basic one. In the Depression, now... Oh! Okay. Yeah. Oh! Oh! The Value of Everything. A Little History of Economics. 23 Things They Don't Tell You About Capitalism. Poor Economics. Donut Economics. Bit of game theory. How to outsmart. How to outsmart an economist. The Great Divide by Joseph Stiglitz. Intro to economics. These were the books that I won uh, when I was not won. Um, I was given when I applied to Oxford. Unique. And I really like this one, which is I will talk about it later. But thinking strategically. Globalization by Joseph Stiglitz, and this one it was Rethinking the Economics of Land and Housing. I don't even realise I had to start many books. Um, Animal Spirits, Behavioural Economics, um, The Innovations Dilemma was one that's recommended for management, and Free Economics, another basic one. So they're the books that I have at home, which is physical, I also have audible, audible books, but yeah, so these were all the ones I had and now I'm going to run through the few that I kind of like the most and yeah, give you guys a rundown and hope it might help answer this question because it's one that I got loads of times about what books to read, uh, is this a good one or why is it a good one um, and I hope that this video will clear it all um, and yeah, let's get into it. So I'd say the two books that everyone talks about when you're in year 12 about economics would be Free Economics and The Undercover Economist. So it's a great one for an intro about economics and it shows how basically it relates to everything and how your decisions impact the economy. Um, so it's a very easy to read book and I think, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend to put it in a personal statement because it's so, in, it's so common. Um, I mean, you can write anything in your personal statement, but I would just say that these two are the basic ones that would be good to read if you want to just know more about economics. Um, so yes. And it also talks about international trade and also um, misinformation, how like not having the right information can affect your decisions. So yeah, I would highly recommend if anyone just wants a introductory knowledge of economics or what it's about. The next one is The Great Divide. It is a good one about inequality. Um, Joseph Stiglitz is a really, really well-known economist um, about the topic and poverty and inequality is one of the like main topics that I'm interested in that got me into economics and behavioral economics. Um, but this one's a really, it's a good one because it, well, it's hard to read. Um, but if you're interested in the topic of inequality and poverty, um, then not only this book, but Joseph Stiglitz 
is a good one. Next one is animal spirits. Animal spirits is all about behavioral economics and how you know how we are humans. We are we are not the Homo economicus, rational economic man. We have feelings and confidence. Um, so behavioral economics again. This is just a very interesting one to read. So it talks about what is animal spirits and how it affects the economy and how conventional economic theory fails. Um, so the idea of confidence and fairness, money illusion, how we are, how we think money doesn't, the value of money doesn't change, but actually because of inflation it changes. Um, but most people don't really think of that. Um, and stories, how, how stories affect confidence and that kind of led to the financial crisis so i really really like behavior economics and um, i like this book so uh yeah it's also written by george akloff and robert schiller amazing economists um so if you're interested in behavior economics then it sounds good yeah it talks about how our emotions are heavily involved in how we make decisions and how we make decisions affects the economy and how the economy just yeah affects everything um and next one is Rethinking the economics of land and housing. Um, so I would recommend this one for anyone who's interested in land economy, maybe um, at Cambridge, um, because this one is all about yeah. Um, so like, I'm just going to read the back because it's a little more clearer than me just describing it. So you know, why are house prices in advanced economies rising much faster than incomes? Why isn't land and location taught or seen as important in modern economics? And what is the relationship between the financial system and land? So it's all about land, house prices, um, and yeah, I think land economy students would be interested in this one. And if you're interested in sustainability and ecological economics, I highly, highly, highly recommend Donut Economics. I love Kate Werrell. She is so kind and such a lovely um, person. Ah! Uh, uh, okay, fangirl. <laughs> um, but Donut Economics is a really fresh, conventional, un conventional, unconventional. Yeah, unconventional book. Um, basically, she talks about how we, how economics is taught right now isn't really the best, um, and how we need a new system to a new economic system, which I kind of agree. The donut model. I love donuts. Who doesn't love the donuts? Um, basically, it's all about sustainability and how we can create a sustainable economic model that will be yeah, sustainable for humans and the planet. Um, and yeah, seven ways to think like a 21st century economist, um, amazing author. I will also link um, a TED talk, which is about Kate's um, idea to the link below. So yeah, if you're interested in sustainability, donut economics, if you're interested in land economy, then rethinking the land of housing. Uh, if you're interested in behavior economics, then animal spirits. Um, and if you want to foundation, then why am I doing a summary in the middle of the video? Well, I won't do a summary at the end, but if you want intro, then um, undercover economist. And if you're interested in poverty and inequality, then it would be um, The Great Divide and also Poor Economics is also a really good one. Why would someone who's really poor still go out and buy a TV? And does having more children make us poorer, for example? It's about understanding the economics of poverty and the economic lives of poor people. I think they talk about different points and like how we can fight global poverty. If you're more mathsy um, and yeah more like maths more then I recommend and want to learn how to think more strategically then yeah. Game theory is a let's just say it's one that was the first that came up when we first started to learn about economics and I think it's really interesting at the same time I guess some of it can seem like, you know, is it realistic? Um, but it's really, it really, it really pushes you to think in a more mathematical way, I guess. Um, but it's a very, very common topic in economics. And I think most books you read are, there's not a lot of maths. Um, and game theory, it's all about thinking strategically about what someone would do if they had this information, if they didn't have this information, what would 
Would they act differently if they were more altruistic? Um, and how can we represent the decisions that they might make in the table or matrix? Um, so yeah, it's it's something that we learn um, in first year, roughly. Um, and I think this topic on game theory is a, it's one that is popular to put in, but it's also a good one to put in. Um, and I think the small Oxford very short introduction is a nice one for people who just want to like look into it and see what it's like. But thinking strategically goes a lot more in depth, um, and yeah, it's a lot more. Um, it has like tree diagrams and tables and graphs um, and yeah, more explanation and different um, cases. And it's just really, really interesting. Um, and you can, yeah, it might influence your decision to choose it as a module in the future. Um, yeah, so it's a really good one. And if you're interested in economic history, then a little book, a little book, a little history of economics is a really good one to read. It's really simple and easily understandable. Um, and it's all about the history of different topics, like the prisoner's dilemma, um, was it uh, broken promises, money illusion again, um, and yeah, why why are countries poor? So this one's a really good one for people who are interested in economic history. And finally, this is my I would say favorite one. Um, well, not favorite one, but I guess more most interactive one, which is can you outsmart an economist? Um, now, I will be honest and say <laughs> I didn't get a single question right when I was doing it in year twelve. Um, but basically, it's just a hundred puzzles to train your brain. Um, so. I think this is a really good book if you want something to think about that use economic theory, um, for example, interviews. I think this is a really good one to just check out. Um, and it's just really fun. Um, it just forces you to think. Um, for example, well, I guess I don't know if I'm allowed to use book examples, um, but let's just. So, one of the questions, which I'm just going to read out, is um, if you've got a 30 year mortgage at 5%, many banks will allow you to make half your monthly payment every two weeks in exchange for which they will declare the mortgage paid off after about 25 years. How can such a small change in the timing of your payments shave almost five years off the life of your mortgage? So, that's a question. You have to think about it. And um, I don't think I will say the answer because you just have to check it out to know the solution because the solution is really long. Um, so yeah, they're the books that I recommend and I will put all of them in the description so you can check it out. Um, I put an Amazon link down there um, and I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Any other future video ideas, please let me know and feel free to subscribe and like and until next time.